Now, if you've ever wanted to dive deeper into how your students work, how long they are editing their documents and when they do those edits, this is the video for you. Let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now today we're looking at Classwork Zoom and I think Classwork Zoom has the perfect name because we are going to be zooming into the actual work produced by our class. Now this ties in with Google Classroom and the various Google Documents. We are talking about Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, any of those applications that have a revision history. Now the revision history is already a great tool to have to see when our students are working and how much they've changed on a single document. But if you want to get an overview of your entire class and multiple assignments set on Google Classroom, well then Classwork Zoom is going to let you do just that. Now it works as a Chrome extension. And so let's have a look at their website. Here we are on the Classwork Zoom website and you'll find more information in that description below. But once installed and signed up for the account, you will install the extension. Now, once the extension is installed, you will see it right there in the top right corner. Whenever you want to access your reports about classwork, you simply click on that and then you come into this view. Now here, this is the main view of Classwork Zoom and this is where you build up timelines. And the way that this is built up is by reading the assignments set in Google Classroom and it's building a timeline of when edits were made and what those edits were. So let's have a look at an example. I'm going to, first of all, select my class here. And again, you can see all your Google Classroom classes are pulled in. Now let's say that these are some classes from last year, you no longer need them. Well, you can always click on this little eye icon and that just hides it from the view. That's a really easy way of making sure you're only selecting the classes you need access to. Next, we can jump into the second choice. This is where we can choose our students. Now when I click on that, we will see that by default, all five students have been selected but I can also simply highlight a single student and build a timeline for that student. I'm going to leave it at all students. Next, we are pulling in all the assignments set on Google Classroom. Now, as you open up the assignments, you can now choose which assignments do you want to pull that data from. So you're going to be looking at the files within those assignments and where do you want to get a bit more information, pulling in all the information from the revision history. Now, once you've selected the assignments, and again, we can still use that eye to hide assignments. Maybe these assignments are not relevant to the timeline we're building. You can click on build timeline. Now this will take some time. So as we're waiting for this, let me just open up another demo account where I've already built some timelines. Here in a demo account, you will see a timeline. Now this timeline shows you all the work performed by these students. Now on the left hand side, you can see the student's name. Now again, these are just demo names, but all these students have completed work. They have completed the work in these various files. Now one thing to really remember about using Classwork Zoom is that what it's showing us on the timeline is the edits. So it's the amount of work that the student has spent editing a document. This can mean copy pasting something in, typing things, or even changing the formatting. It is not showing you how long they have been viewing a document. So for example, if they are reading for 10 minutes and then do some work, you will only see the time it took them to complete the work and edit the document. Now, the second thing I wanna highlight about using this tool is it's all about informing your teaching. It's not a gotcha tool. It's not a tool to be used to try and find those students that are trying to avoid work. This is about informing the teaching and really helping them to spread out the work. If you've set an assignment for three weeks and you see that they complete all the work in that last day, maybe it's time to have a conversation with your class about really spreading out the work, planning their days. Now, what I love most about using the timeline is that everything is about hovering. So as soon as you hover over a name, you get more information. Hover over a block of time on the timeline, you get information. So here you can see as I hover over this essay, I get that link to the file. If I now click on this, it opens up the file in a separate tab and I can start going through the file. I can also hover over the time it's spent them. So here we can see the total time that Zach has worked on this document is two hours, 51 minutes and 38 seconds. As I scroll down, you will see we also have a number of different icons visible. 
This icon here tells you that the file was removed from the assignment. So when I hover over that file and I click on it, I can still access the file. However, it is no longer attached to this assignment. Scrolling down, we will see that there are also two students here that have no work to show. And at the bottom, we also have a student that is not in the class. Now, if at any point in time you've had students and maybe they got some help from outside of your domain or outside of the class, this will be highlighted by adding them to that area. And these will be students no longer in the class. Now, this could be because you've removed them. In this case, Carter Tom was removed from the classroom later on and therefore it is marked as not in the class. Now let's have a look at the main timeline. Now you can see there's lots of different colors. Now that's just to make it much easier to read. The different colors that you see here, the blue, orange, purple, green, they will just cycle through and it's only to highlight that these are different students we're talking about. So the blue up here means the same thing as the orange and the purple and the green. Now, again, using that hovering over different elements, we can find out more information. So here I can see on Saturday, November the 17th, between 4.10 and 4.20, there was a block of work. And when I hover over that, I can see there were eight minutes and 41 seconds of editing time in this block and about an hour before this block. Hovering over another one, again, I see 21 minutes, 33 seconds, of an hour and 10 minutes before this block. You can also see the gaps and this way you can see when most of your students are editing the various files and documents. Now you will also notice that some blocks have little red areas or markers. Now these indicate that there is a potential paste. Now as you hover over that you will see what has been pasted in. Now the program automatically recognizes large sets of data being added as pasting. That doesn't necessarily mean that your student has been pasting. Maybe they lost their internet connection and everything was uploaded at one time. Or maybe they're simply pasting links and making sure that all their citations are in order. Here you can see the area that was highlighted. This was clearly a paragraph that was pasted in. I can scroll down. You can see another paste here. We have a, a website link being pasted in. This is someone working on their sources, and therefore we can just ignore that. And then here again, we have another paste. Now you will also notice that they give you a certainty. And that percentage of certainty just relates to how much was pasted in at one time. If you have an entire paragraph, it will probably be 98, 99% sure that it was pasted. If it's much shorter or a smaller amount of characters, maybe they just lost the internet connection or they're on a slower internet connection. Now in this timeline, we can also zoom out. So let's just go ahead and zoom out. Now you can do that with a trackpad, your mouse, or you can use the buttons here at the top. You can zoom out and I can see the various dates and when they've done the work. For example, here we can see on Saturday, all the work was performed in the evening between four and eight. We have one student that started a little bit earlier here, about 41 minutes early in the morning. In addition to that, we can zoom out even more and then we can see a range of dates and we can also see when they have worked on this. When you go to the zoom button, you can choose to zoom out using two hours a day, a week or look at the full range. Now let's look at the full range. Now the full range will pull all the data from when the assignment was assigned all the way up to the deadline. Now I am looking at the entire assignment. And how do I know that? Well, it's by looking at those little triangles at the top. Here, this little triangle indicates when it was assigned. And the red triangle indicates when the deadline for this assignment was set. So looking at this data set, I can see that almost no work was completed. And then when we got really close to that deadline, a lot of students started working and producing a great deal of work. Here we have a student that has spread out the work a little bit more. However, still the bulk of all the work was performed near the deadline. And this informs us as teachers that maybe our students are struggling managing their own time or managing the project. Now let's have a look at one student in particular, Sam. Let's go down and have a look at some of Sam's work. We can see here Sam has done little to no work. And then as we get very close to the deadline, we have a lot of red color. So let's have a look at Sam's work. Here we have a little bit of editing work. And then we dive straight into the first red marker. 
Uh, this red signifies that there was a paste. So let's have a look at what was pasted. Okay, we see a sentence was pasted there, 53 characters. Okay, 67% certainty, this could be an internet connectivity issue. Here we have an hour and 16 minutes work, and then again, a little paste, only 70% certainty. Again, this could easily be the connection. And then another block of an hour and 16 minutes. Here we have another block, an hour and 40 minutes, and again, something was pasted. So this really indicates how and what your students worked on. If we compare that with, for example, Anna here, she started working on her assignment at around 7.30. Now, note the deadline for this assignment was set to eight o'clock in the evening. And so you can see here that she clearly went over that deadline and then even has a very large block here where an entire paragraph was pasted in. So this can really help you to understand what your students are doing with their assignments on Google Classroom. Now, one of the things we all love about Google Classroom and Google Documents is the power of collaboration. Now, we can all collaborate, work on the same document, and it just works. Well, Classwork Zoom has taken that into consideration, and whenever you have shared documents that have been edited on by multiple editors, that too is highlighted. So here you will see there is an additional icon, and that means that this document has been shared. Now, at the moment, it is red, and that highlights that someone that was editing on this document is no longer in this class. So we can click on that. And here we see all the editors of this document. Not only that, we also see how much of the content was contributed by each editor. So here we can see that Zach contributed 30% of the document, Anna 13.7%. Now again, this is how much they have edited doesn't mean that they didn't contribute to the discussion or they didn't bring ideas to the table or to that group work. It simply means that they were not the main editors. Scrolling down, we will see which student is no longer in that class. And again, we have that demo student, Carter Tom, who is no longer in this class. He contributed 1.8% to this document. In addition to that, you can also look at the amount of time they've spent. So you can see it's set to percentage of characters added. I can change that and choose the editing time. This completely shifts things around. So you can see that Jason has actually spent more time on this document. So he may not have edited as much, but he spent more time. And then that really warrants you looking at, okay, who has been pasting things and who has been really editing the text by themselves. So again, take this with a grain of salt, look at the editing time, look at the characters added. You can't just go by one data point here. It's all about looking at the big story. Now, one more thing to highlight is that you can export all this data. So here at the top, we have that download button. This allows us to export this. So we can select a date range up to seven days, and then we can export the information as a CSV file, which then allows us to pull it into Google Sheets and do what we want with that. In addition to exporting, you also have settings. So here in these settings, you can look at your overall interface of Classwork Zoom and some of the things that it will show you or won't show you. So here we can see we have a 12 of 24 hour time format. We can show removed files or ignore those files. Indicate pasting, indicate formatting. So let's go ahead and turn this on. We can also indicate suggestions and we can show our own edits and comments. Now, the only thing I've changed here is the formatting. So let's click on save. We're going to rebuild this timeline. So now that we have turned on the indication of formatting, we can also see where they were formatting their document. So not necessarily editing the characters in their documents, but changing the formatting. So here you will see that these timelines now have an extra color, a light yellow color. I can hover over this section here and I can see that the font size was changed. This one, we can see that there was some underlining and some font colors. So all in all, incredibly useful information for you as a teacher to have if you really want to dive deeper into what your students are doing. Now, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, there will be a link in that description below to find out even more about Classwork Zoom. Reach out, let us know in that comment section below. Do you like this? What do you like best? 
What would you like to see added to Classwork Zoom? And this is something you can see yourself using in the classroom. Now, don't forget, on your way back up, click on that subscribe button. And if you want to dive even deeper into conversations about these tools, you can always join the channel. And when you join the channel, not only are you making all these videos possible, you will also get access to additional perks and an invite to our members only Discord server. So I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.